Despite a bountiful holiday season for retailers, inflation fears are on the rise for a large portion of Americans. Consumer prices rose 0.8 percent last month, putting the annual rate of inflation at 6.8 percent for the year ending in November. Federal officials blame the increase on pandemic-related supply chain issues. For more, let's bring in senior retail reporter at Business Insider, Anya Kane. Anya, great to see you as always. Americans are spending more for goods, yet they seem to keep buying. What's driving that, and do you expect the trend to continue? Thanks so much for having me. Um, and, and yes, in terms of some of these inflation fears, we are seeing uh, the sticker shock maybe in, in, in grocery stores and whatnot. Um, but at the same time, it was a very successful holiday season. Um, we might see some of these inflation uh, numbers start to go down mid-2022. So there's kind of a, a light on the horizon in that sense. Um, but at the same time, uh, it's it's one of those things I think people are just sort of like, these are essentials where, where costs are rising. This is food we're talking about. This is gas, uh, stuff people need to survive. So it's not like anyone can just like stop, uh, you know, shopping at the grocery store necessarily. Speaking of that successful holiday season, MasterCard says that holiday spending rose by 8.5% this year, despite those price hikes. What specifically are people buying? Yeah, this year was a great year for jewelry, actually, weirdly enough, and apparel. And so sort of interesting after sort of a pandemic-wide trend of everyone sort of dressing down a bit that those items would tick back up once more, according to MasterCard. So it kind of is a sign that maybe people are switching things up a bit, uh, you know, in this kind of late stage of the pandemic. I mean, who doesn't love jewelry, right? Uh, how might higher prices impact families and businesses across the country? And is this confined to regional pockets? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, in, in terms of regional pockets, places with a higher cost of living, this is going to hit people much harder, right? Because uh, they're going to, their budgets are going to be basically going through the roof in some cases. Um, and then, of course, with lower income families, this is going to be hitting them much harder because they just have less wiggle room. And without any more stimulus checks on the horizon, uh, a lot of people are going to be hurting over some of this stimulus because it's, again, it's not just about, you know, goods that you might want to have. It's goods that you really need to have. That is tough. Uh, what are some long term lessons the retail industry has learned from the pandemic and how might we see them applied going forward? Yeah, great question. I, I would say the biggest one is e-commerce is here to stay. Right. Um, what what was basically the pandemic did for e-commerce? What, you know, a, a number of years, I mean, like it basically penetration moved forward so quickly in terms of people uh, adopting e-commerce who maybe were reluctant to otherwise. And so the biggest thing is that, you know, continuing to invest in uh, good e-commerce options, delivery, uh, quick fulfillment, uh, buy online pickup in stores is going to be the way forward for these retailers in order to keep attracting the customers. And then the other thing is with all the inflation happening, um, that's going to potentially benefit some of the really discount retailers and uh, the retailers that make their name by bringing value to people. So think about your Costco's and your Walmarts. Um, if people are turning to them to get uh, the more bang for their buck, so to speak, then that's going to be a good deal uh, for them in the long run. How do small businesses, family owned shops, how do they play into all of this? Yeah, right. With, I mean, unfortunately, they don't have the same scale as some of these national retailers. So um, they're going to need more support from whether that's government or local consumers who can afford to shop there. Um, but it, it's definitely a situation that plays more into the hands of the national retailers that have that massive scale and can really leverage that. Um, right now, for people who are mom and pops and for consumers, it's just going to be a matter of trying to hold on until some of these logistical issues clear up. Anya Kane, thank you. Thanks for having me.